Is anyone else just super excited that it's peach and cherry season? Or is it even peach and cherry season where you live? Leave a comment down below. Yes, I have both iced coffee and tea. It's that kind of day. I'm pleased to announce that I have done it. My double rounds of revisions for circuit are finished. And that means I'm gonna be querying again, hopefully sooner than I thought. I was planning on September or October, maybe August. So I've talked about it in some of my editing revision vlogs. I've been doing a several step process to go through revisions this time for circuit. And I got some feedback from some various agents when I sent out the last round of queries. So I took all of that to heart. I watched a lot more videos of agents talking about what they're looking for in my genre and everything. And I have done it. I have added 13,000 words to circuit. So now it's at 82,000 words. It probably should have been out from the start. From the start, it was 100,000. I have just, I've talked about the problems in other videos with this book. Anyway, I won't go too far into that. But what I do want to go into is the productivity hacks that I tried and tested along the way. That's what this video is going to be about. I did want to say, before I start querying, my critique partner has been sending him back chapters. She sent back the first half of the book now. It's 32 chapters now and I have 15 back from her. I am going through, I have my critique partner go through after my revisions and just double check. So I don't want any agents to catch anything that my critique partner could be catching for me. So she's catching all of the little things. I'm going to do one more pass before I actually send it to any agents. But this is going to be a strong query this time. I am ready. I have been talking to people about my book more to try and figure out like how to word my query letter a lot better because I did a really poor query letter in the last round. Back to the tried and true productivity tips. I had talked about these tips in a previous video which I will link up above but I'm going to talk about them more succinctly in this video. So number one productivity hack and we're just gonna go for it. You guys know what's coming I'm sure if you've been on other author tube channels. Comic Sans has changed my life. I don't know yet if it's as good for drafting because I haven't drafted with it yet, but I've heard it's fantastic for drafting. What I did was change my entire Google Docs over to Comic Sans and let me tell you, the revision process was a snap. It went so fast. I don't know if I have slight dyslexia or what, but I had so such a struggle in every other revision round. I would get fatigued, I would get bogged down, I would be missing all kinds of things all throughout, and then just changing it to Comic Sans, I didn't have any of those problems. The fatigue was gone, totally gone. I could go through an entire chapter and be like, you know what, I'm gonna do the next chapter. And it also lended really well to doing the second part of my two-step revision process, which was transferred over to a document that could read it aloud to me. If you want to hear the funny robotic voice, I'll just, I don't know, maybe I'll play you some. Let me play you some robotic voice. Robin liked working in the wood shop well enough. It was her second home, after all. But at age 21, she was beginning to realize she didn't have the same passion for it her father did. The thing that hearing it read aloud did for me was allow me to catch the stupid mistakes. The typos, especially, that I wouldn't have caught otherwise and a lot of the awkward wording or places where it's just like, wait, what the heck did I just say? So it allowed me to really clean up the draft in a way that I had never really tried before. Reading, a, hearing it read aloud was a total game changer. So just having the draft presented to me in two different ways made revision so easy. Cannot recommend enough changing your whole document over to Comic Sans you change it back afterwards, don't worry, it's not gonna be like that forever. Just for the revisions, and then listening to it read to you was incredible. Oh, Mulan's here, she's gonna say hello. Oh, there she is, hi. Having the story read aloud to you, you do not know what your eyes are missing until you hear it. You have gotta get another sense involved, and hearing the words read back to you is great. If there's someone in your life who will read it to you, don't read it to yourself is what I'm saying, because you're gonna skip the same things, your eyes just are gonna skip over the same things. If someone else is willing to read it to you, that's great, but if you have a computer read it to you, 
you're gonna hear all your mistakes. They're not gonna skip anything for you. So that one is particularly helpful. I think my past revisions all took the better part of a year. This revision round was what? Two months, about two solid months of revisions. And I revise once, maybe twice a week. I only have about two days a week that I can work on my novel. And I do work on it for a long time. I usually try and work on it for several hours of the day. I'm not sitting in the chair all the time. And I still got through, now what is it now? I think it's 164 pages worth of my novel in two months. Very clean draft, double revision round, plus sending it back and forth with a critique partner. So. I'm just saying, for working only two days a week on it, for only maybe six hours maximum, that's pretty quick. The other thing I highly recommend you try for productivity is some kind of app to make you stop looking at your phone. Because I honestly, I look at my phone more than I want to admit. I'm playing Clash of Clans every five minutes. For three, do something to get your phone out. If you're the type who needs to turn off the internet, turn off the internet, but for me, I just need to not be able to check Twitter on my phone. If you have something to lock your phone down so you can't use it, it does help a lot. So the one that I like is Forest App, which I talked about in the other video as well. If the Forest App is running and my tree is growing, I feel productive and I'm like, oh, I can wait till the end of the half hour and then I can, I can check after that, after it gives me the little beat. But 30 minutes is usually a good interval for me. I just start planting my tree. I don't want my tree to die, so I don't look at my phone. Does it stop me from looking at Skype all the time? No. But for me, I need something. I need what my fourth step for you is, and that's to complain to somebody. Complaining and having an outlet is great for my productivity, but I'll bet it's really good for yours too. If I'm just stuck and annoyed, I just Skype, well, I, I type Skype, we don't like face face because I would disrupt the writing time, but I just type a message to my critique partner and just like, oh, this part was so hard, or I'm stuck here. And even if she's not around and can't respond right away, just having that outlet where I can just vent about what I'm working on is so helpful. Having some, that's the one great thing about like doing writers groups and things like that is that sometimes all you need is to complain and then you'll get through it rather than just sit there and be stuck and miserable sometimes just complaining a little bit and getting it out of your system helps you move forward with the draft really quickly for me it was my critique partner I do also complain to my husband when he's around but my critique partner understands what I'm going through so I talked to her and my last productivity tip. People are gonna get frustrated with me, I'm sure, but it's get up and walk away. I'm dead serious. If you are stuck, and this is for drafting, this is for revisions, this is for all of it. If you're stuck on somewhere and you're just like, I cannot do this, I'm dreading it, dreading the next paragraph, really unsure what to do, it feels like you're just like hitting yourself over the head with a hammer, get up and walk away. You could give it an hour, you could give it a day, you could give it a week, but I guarantee you when you come back to it, you're going to work a lot faster than if you just sat there all day. Because if you sit in the chair all day working on the same thing and you get maybe a paragraph done and you hate your novel, that's not very helpful actually. But if you get up, think about it, do something else, maybe wash your dishes or maybe watch Stranger Things, and then you come back to it once you've kind of let it mull around in your head, you're not only gonna get that paragraph done in like 10 minutes because now you're ready for it, you're gonna get the next whole chapter done too. If I cannot move forward, I just get up and go and do something else. And I can come back to it next week if I need to or in a couple hours, I can watch some YouTube, see what other people are talking about. Sometimes, rare occasions, someone is talking about exactly the problem that you have and it's just like, oh, that fixed that, which is great. But sometimes you just gotta give yourself a little distance and give your brain a little bit of time. I don't think we realize how much our brains are working when we're writing. A thing I watched about automatic translator, well, this is for like, for Congress, like big government things, people who translate instantly, instantaneous translation. That's what it was called, not automatic. The people who sit there and translate one language over to another and say it back to somebody for the earpiece, 
for big government things, they only work for about 15 minutes at a time. And they said their big secret is they eat chocolate during their breaks because the amount of brain power it takes they get fully exhausted. They're using their brains so hard and so much, the chocolate helps revitalize them and the frequent breaks make it so they can physically keep going. We don't realize how much using our brains in a way that's not just day to day really takes it out of us. Like it's the same kind, well it's not exactly the same. People who can instantaneously translate are incredible. Like seriously amazing. But when you're writing, you're using a lot of different parts of your brain very, very hard. You gotta give yourself some, that's why you gotta have a snack, you gotta have your coffee. You're not being silly, you're not being weird and just needing little ritual things, like maybe you are. But you're also using a lot of brain power. It's like having a workout. You need to stop and rest and if you really can't move forward, it could be that you really can't move forward, like your brain is at its limit. There's nothing else to give. So give it some rest, take a break, and come back to it when you're ready. You have to give yourself the credit for how much work is going into your novel. And especially if you're on like a 10th draft, I pretty much just finished my 10th draft, if I'm honest with myself. It was a, mm, yeah, especially since this was a double round of revisions. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of brain power going into something. That's a lot of finger moving. Like there's more going into it than one would expect. So cut yourself some slack. Theme of the channel, right? Those are my productivity tips for you. They're pretty standard. They're pretty, they're things that people have talked about before, but I am telling you the Comic Sans tip works wonders for me. And if you're skeptical, just try it and just see if it speeds up your writing and revision immensely. For me, night and day difference. Anyway, those were my tips for productivity. I hope you enjoyed. I hope some of those helped you. Leave a comment down below if you have some extra productivity tips or if you've tried some of these and if they did or didn't work for you, let me know. I hope you're having a great rest of your week and I'll probably do another vlog when I start the query process, but the revisions are done so there won't be any more revision vlogs for a while. I'm really excited about what I'm going to be writing for next NaNoWriMo, so we'll see, but anyway, good luck to all of us and have a great day. Bye!